The Cindy Adams Show, 77 WABC. I am now about to speak to Art Garfunkel, Jr. We know the name. We know Art Funkel, Sr. And this is his son, who's as smart as they come and probably starting to be almost as successful. And I spoke to him just the other day. Okay, okay, okay. So you're going to tell us. You're going to be speaking Monday at, at the City Winery. Tell us about that. Yes, that's right, Cindy. I, uh, I've got my debut show, or almost debut show. It's called Art Garfunkel Jr. Songs of My Father, premiering um, on Monday, July 31st at the uh, city, city Winery, which is uh, Pier 57 Hudson River Park on 11th Avenue at 8 p.m. And I'm going to be singing all the beloved hits from, uh, from Simon and Garfunkel and a couple, a couple lovely songs from my father's solo career as well. A few, a, few other, a few other gems that I personally love. It's going to be an exciting evening. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, okay, when did you begin singing? Don't tell me. I mean, I heard that at yeah. age two, I can't believe you could sing at age two. Nobody can speak at age two. When did you become singing, begin singing? Yeah, that's that's actually uh, really the truth. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere between age two and age three, I um, released my first lovely notes. I was uh, brought at a very young age on the stage by my father and mother, and appeared very early on, I believe, in Japan and uh, different places in America, and started singing the little part of a uh, little part of the song Fifty Nine Street Bridge, feeling groovy. And built it up from there, so uh, so I really have been singing absolutely all my life. Okay, so you never actually took lessons. How did you learn how to do this? How did you learn how to sing or be on stage at age two? Well, at age at age two or two and a half, nobody nobody learns. Uh, you know, it comes organically, learning by doing. There I was on stage, um, and I, I guess like most young children, tried my best to imitate. Uh, my father and mother and their singing and uh, just continued my whole life to expose myself to, to the stage and the craft and learned, learned that way plus, plus I suppose a certain component of, of, uh, of, of what I inherited an inherited ability to sing so oh, okay. it served me well what about when you, you, went to sc- you went to school in New York City didn't you the, the Upper East Side that's right. I went to a uh, school called uh, Rudolf Steiner School on the Upper East Side, and um, they knew about who you were and who your father is. They did. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't worth hiding. Uh, nor was it possible to hide. And uh, and that uh, lovely fact, uh, being my father's son, has has always blessed me every day of my entire life. So I was. I'm very proud of. of his legacy, and uh, it was nice going to school in my neighborhood where I was born, grew up, and uh, managed to actually learn learn German, the German language, because Rudolf Steiner, uh, the, the founder of the school, was from Germany, so I, I speak that language fluently as well. But you live in Germany. Why do you live in Germany? I actually moved at the end of 16, at the end of age 16, to Berlin and have uh, resided there ever since because um, you know, I always had a connection to the, to the language. I was learning it in school. Um, I've always had a tremendous uh, desire to see the world. I think we say in German, Wanderlust, uh, a desire to wander. And um, I had this connection to Germany. My father uh, has always been very appreciated there, and we, we toured Germany very frequently as I, uh, when I was a, a small child and I had friends and connections there and learned the language. Uh, it just seemed like a natural choice. And uh, to this day, I, I travel all around the world. I'm in New York to see my family and friends every, you know, every month and a half or whatever. So uh, it's a decision I don't regret. 
I okay, like okay, lot. okay. So th- there are so many things that are strange, that are odd, like staying singing at age two, and and that you're. Well, I, first- I don't think that's odd. You know, by the time you're by the time you're two and a half, or somewhere between two and three, you can utter your first notes and words. And oh, please! And at age two and a half, I was falling on my behind. What did I well, know? We're all different, I suppose. <laughs> But I'd like okay. Your behind is better than mine. So tell me about <laughs> tell me about your first language. It was Yiddish. That's another oddity. No, no, my, my first language was 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 English. But I was exposed. Uh, I was exposed through my grandparents uh, to Yiddish, and uh, like like many other New Yorkers, many fellow New Yorkers, um, just living, just just growing up in the city, you have. You have, you know, you're exposed to to the 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 the, the, the basic hundred, two hundred words of Yiddish, and uh, and my grandmother, my dad's mother, did have a command of the German language as well. Uh, not only Yiddish, Yiddish was her first language. That's correct of my grandparents, and but she also she also understood and spoke High German, so uh, that 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 influenced me on, on on my road to learning German as well. You know. Okay, how different is your voice? From your father's, how different is my voice from my father's? Uh, it's different. We have we have a different uh, timbre. My voice is a, a tad bit higher. Um, the our our, our sound is is, is 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 slightly different. Um, but in the in the big scheme of things, I would say I would say there's a lot of similarities. Uh, my father has one of the, in my personal opinion, one of the most beautiful, legendary male um, tenor voices of all time. And um, I love to listen to his music. Or when he comes over or I come over to his place and he, he blesses me with his, with his voice there. And, you know, we love to sing together. But I'd say the big picture, we're, we're pretty similar, our voices. So why don't you sing something now? Can you sing anything? Is there any song or a few? April, come she will, when streams are ripe and swelled with rain, may she will stay. (laughs) That's pretty good. Thank God you're not a dancer. I wouldn't know what to ask you. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Yeah, I love April Come She Will. It's one of the most beautiful Salmon and Garfunkel tunes. Did you ever take any actual professional voice lessons? I never took any actual professional voice lessons. No, I did not. <laughs> I'm not against it. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Did you ever screw up on stage? I mean, you had your father with you, but when you were starting out, did you ever louse up anything? Uh, you know, you know, any performer who who works the craft professionally and has done as many shows as I have, uh, you have your moments, but uh, but there were there were always small small little things. In other words, um, sometimes during a show, if you got a lot of songs to sing or you're distracted, you might flip a verse. That means you know you might sing the second verse where the first verse should go. But I'm usually pretty quick, so if I make that mistake, I'll. I'll, I'll just sing, you know, uh, I'll correct the order during the song and hopefully, hopefully as few people as possible will notice. But, out, but, but in terms of out and out, uh, just, just not know what's going on, no, that's never happened to me. Thank God. Oh, not well, yet. okay. Not well, yet. <laughs> well, you've got a future. So tell me about art. Did you learn to protect your voice? In the old days, a long time ago, when I was married to a comedian who's now gone, Joey uh-huh. Adams, we used to put... He used to put a singer in the car when he was going to speak somewhere, if a singer was on the, on the show. And the singer always made sure he shut the window and he didn't put on air conditioning. And the singer was always a pain in the ass. So are you that way? Are you, you, we can't put air near you, no air conditioning. It, it's completely and 100% true. There are three things that a singer, that, you know, three basic things that a singer needs to watch out for. Uh, before his show, like one or two days before the show or on the same day. The biggest enemy is air conditioning. So a little air conditioning is not bad. It can help you sleep. You know, it can help you stay cool. But you never want, just just as as he said, you never want a vent of blowing cold air uh, directed at your at your head or your throat. It's, um, it'll, it'll cause you quickly to be, to, to be hoarse. The second thing I uh, 
avoid on the day and days leading up to the show is uh, bare feet on cold tiles. So if you're going into to, you know to use the restrooms, uh, you always want to wear slippers so that you don't expose your feet to to to, to cold you know cold surfaces. It's a, a good way for some reason to to get a cold or to get a hoarse voice. And the last thing I'd say, which is not quite as important. You don't want to be yapping your head off on the day of the show. The day before, you can do it, no problem. On the day of the show, <laughs> minimize talking. There's your answer. <laughs> okay, don't worry about it. I'm not going to call you tomorrow. I'm just. What was oh, your name? What was your name at birth? Were you named Art Garfunkel Jr.? Well, my birth name was James Arthur Garfunkel. You know, James Art Garfunkel. And uh, since 2013, I've been just uh, Art Garfunkel Jr. So I don't use. Uh, don't use the James part anymore. As a matter of fact, it's it's not even on my passport anymore. I removed it. <laughs> What's on your passport now? Well, you know, I'm Art Garfunkel Jr. Okay. So where does Art Funk uh, Art? I'm I'm well, well, my actually, actually to be to be perfectly uh, Arthur Garfunkel Jr. <laughs> okay. Okay. My teeth are not set set in my mouth, so I'm mumbling. I'm I'm getting the wrong oh. words out. Where do you go next? Show. I know after you do your show a Monday night, you're on to something else. Where? What? That's right. That's right. Uh, I um, so the show's on Monday night. Then I have in the uh, middle of August a uh, beautiful show in in Austria on the Slovenian border with a uh, fabulous gospel group. They're called the Golden Voices of Gospel. I actually recorded a song, uh, When a Man Loves a Woman, uh, which I sang in German, by the way, with, with the gospel singers, and, um, and I had a great time doing that, and I'm right in the middle of finishing up my second studio album. I released my first album, um, which is called uh, Just Like You, trans- translated you know, into, in, into English from, from its original German title. And that album was a big hit in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, uh, which was a, a, great, a great thrill for me. So I'm following that up. So I have a lot on my plate right now. How different are your voices, yours and your father's? Well, I encourage, I encourage anybody who wants to find that out to come on uh, Monday night to the winery and hear me sing. They're, uh, they're pretty similar, I'd say. Is he going to be there? My father is going to be there, yes. Is he going to sing with you? Well, that's the golden the golden question. Uh, I would guess yes, but I cannot guarantee it. But I okay. would imagine yes. Okay, honey. Okay, thank you, thank you. Give one more plug to your Monday night event. Thank you. 8 p.m. Monday night, July 31st, City Winery, 11th Avenue. Don't miss it. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. You're welcome, sweetie. It was lovely to talk to you, honey. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.